Okay, thank you very much for having me. I'm Professor Tunda Petter. I'm, I'm currently um, Professor of Clinical Ophthalmology at Queen's University, Belfast, and also kept my honorary position as an advisor to the Morfeds, uh, Re Morfeds Eye Hospital Reading Center. So I think one of the main issues is, is raising awareness. A lot of people, despite having had diabetes for a very long time, they are not clear that they can have diabetic retinopathy, that they can have eye complications. And several of the doctors are not aware, general physicians, general practitioners, and even some of the young ophthalmologists are not aware that you have to have regular checks and that diabetic blindness can come uh, without much of a warning sign. So diabetic retinopathy and even diabetic maculopathy, which uh, affects the center, they, they can be silent for a very, very long time. And even for very severe disease might not cause visual complications until the very last minute when vision is finally lost. So it will have to be a partnership between patients and the doctor. And we have to be able to raise public awareness and also educate the doctors to to be able to act on it on time. So I think we need to make sure that there, there will be several um, factors playing a role as to what people decide to use, which camera to buy, uh, which imaging modality to use. One of, one of the main uh, important things will be as to how quick uh, you want the screening to be um, taking place, how much details do you want to get, get on the images, and potentially how much automation you will be able to apply to image analysis. Once you have considered those factors, you will buy a, or purchase or build a new a camera, and then you will be able to get some of the basics done. And then some patients will require more higher level imaging, and then you can also uh, make sure that those are appropriately done. But you don't have to have necessarily the most expensive camera for every single patient. So the, the advantage is definitely that you can photograph a lot of patients in fairly small um, and or short period of time. And then um, those people who might not be medically trained, but they can be trained up to be image analysis graders, they can look at these images. They're very competent people, and they can learn to just do analysis of the images. They, they, they can do couple of hundred patients worth of images a day. Also, you can apply automated image analysis methods <clears throat> to make sure that some of the images are done automatically and that will speed um, the image analysis up uh, again. And then once you, have, um, once you have done that, then you can use your ophthalmologist time, which is always very limited. There is no country on earth where there are enough ophthalmologists. You can use your doctor's time to make sure that they see those patients that require a clinical appointment and you use the doctor's time well. I think one of the issues that we would really like to see is that young surgeons don't get this many really late cases. I know it's a tragedy for them because they don't operate as much, but it, is, it, is, it would be a massive improvement for quality of life for the patients, for their families. And I think there is nothing worse when someone has diabetic retinopathy, for example, during pregnancy, and they lose their sight, and by the time they, they have the baby, they might be blind and they never able to see their child. I don't think anyone should go through that pain. <laughs>